So we have the LAN cable, the one cable connected, and now let's connect the power cable to turn on the NanoPi R6X. So we have some output on the monitors, as you can see, uh, it's a black uh, background with white text. Let's see, all right, so please press enter to activate this console, localhost login. And when I press another enter, uh, friendly WRT login show up. So let's type in root and the password will be password. So right here, we can see that the device is running friendly WRT 22. It is a fork of open WRT 22 for sure. But there is another problem. The network adapters are not up and running and it is showing unidentified network right here. So let's check it out. And when I type in IF config, I can only see one loopback interface. Let's see how about IP link. So for IP link, we do see Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. But the status is all down. Okay. And let's see what is the LSPCI result. For the LSPCI command, we do see the Ethernet controllers of the Routex RTL A125 2.5 gigabit Ethernet and also the 1 gigabit show up right here. So I assume there is something wrong with the firmware and let's go and check for an update. Alright, so this is the wiki page of the NanoPi's R6S and in order to install the OS to the EMMC storage, you will need either a web page, for example, OpenWRT or FrameWRT, or you will need a micro SD card. So usually I will go with the web page installation because it is easier, but in this case, we can't log into Lucy, so we will need to use the micro SD card. And basically, this is very simple. You just need to go to the download link right here, which will point you to this one. And after that, you will find the link to the official image and then the SD to EMMC image right here. Basically, you will need to download this eFlasher file. So we have some option for OpenWRT or FrameWRT21 as well as 22. And in this case, I have downloaded FrameWRT22. So after we have downloaded the file, I use the Rufus application to write that image to the micro SD card. So after that, I will boot up the NanoPies R6S with the micro SD card and then it will automatically copy the OS to the internal EMMC storage. All right, so this will be the approach for uh, most of the uh, Rockchip uh, recent release, for example, the NanoPies R5S, NanoPi R6S, and all the routers or SPC running the same SOC from Rockchip. So beside the micro SD card installation, you can also do it via the mushroom mode or you can also install via the USB, but it's require a USB A to A cable. So I will skip this for now. And I think that it's going to be finished soon. So let's wait for it. All right, so right arrow. That is not good. Finally, the image has been successfully written to the micro SD card. That is really good and it's very late at night already. So let me remove the micro SD card and let's check it out. All right, so I have inserted the micro SD card on the NanoPies R6S. And right now, let me connect the power cable to turn it on. All right, we see the black screen with the white colors, and we can see that the process is showing installing Frame WRT. 
very good we can see that the write speed which means the copy speed from the micro sd card and write to the emmc storage is around 34 or 40 megabyte per second so now i will turn off the device and then take out the micro sd card Please press enter to activate this console. All right, root, password. Let's see, I have config. And this time we can see Ethernet 1, Ethernet 2, and also the BLN. So I assume that everything is working so far. So let's switch back to the PC. So we can see that everything is up and running so far. I'm able to log into the front WRG web UI at 192.168.2.1. The model is from LX Nanobytes R6 S and the kernel version is 5.1. So still we have 8GB of RAM and then for the shortware we can see that we have 30 gigabyte free space so the EMC should be 32 gigabyte the friendly WRT has been pre-installed with some packages such as the kernel manager the mount point which means the block mount and time synchronization as well as the dynamic DNS at block QoS and then we also have some NAS package and then we also have the SQM QS as well at the Lucy app statistic. So right now I have enabled the interface. I have changed the one setting to PPoE. And you can see from here it directly run on the internet interface. So everything is working so far. I got IPv4, IPv6. So running the speed test with shortwave offloading enables and packet steering enable with also full core NAT. I got 400 MPPS throughput with just around 7% lot of the CPU. So it is 93 idle. And for offload, I have only 140 MPPS because this is the plan that I signed up. But we can see that the CPU is almost stay at 96% uh, idle so if I turn off the shortware offloading I will uh, for sure see the CPU usage increase and let's check it so we can see that the CPU uses go to 14 uh, just now it is 86% idle and for upload, we can see that the CPU utilization increased by another 2%. All right, so we can see that the show way offloading really did a good job right here, and so far it reduced the CPU utilization by 10%. So that will be all for this quick unboxings and overview videos. In the next videos, I'm going to check out the one to LAN throughput with the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet in both one and LAN. So that is all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you all.